walls do not always just stay the same after a crash. Uh, that's for sure. There's something happening, energy, um, and the wall is breaking apart um, as well as the cars destroyed. Um, so there must be some kind of how do we repair it now? And the cost for that is cannot be a cheap solution because what if a block of concrete falls out of the wall? How do you replace this? Do you just put some cement on top of it and then say it's fixed or does the wall break again at the same point after the initial crash? Then you fix it and it breaks at the same parts again that you just tried to kind of repair by gluing. You it. listen to Martin Hickman general manager of PASCO International, who is our guest today. This is the fifth episode of Concrete Injection Made Easy. But first some music. Martin and I dive into the use of concrete barriers on motorways as well as the dynamics of damage to concrete barriers due to corrosion of internal reinforcement and concrete degradation due to carbonation. We also get into what the future holds for roadside concrete barrier repair. I hope this episode is food for thought about whether there's a better way to repair damaged concrete barriers than replacing huge chunks. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and sit back listening. Let's do this! I just wanted to tell a quick story to our listeners uh, how we met and uh, how uh, I managed to uh, invite you uh, on the show. I uh, First of all, thank you very much that I uh, can be part of this podcast. Um, I think it's a great idea. So, uh, I don't know if you remember, but we met five years ago in 2015 in Pond. That's correct, yes. That was the fair in uh, Kielce, and the fair called uh, Autostrada in Polish, uh, highway in English. Uh, I was just, you know, uh, going uh, around to see if there is anyone to talk about my concrete repair and uh, injection business to find a client, maybe someone interesting. And then uh, I have found your company and we had a great conversation at the time. And uh, so, yeah, and five years later, we see each other in front of our computers uh, to have this uh, discussion about uh, safety on the roads and the concrete uh, safety devices that are being used worldwide uh, everywhere, actually everywhere, really everywhere where we, where we drive. Uh, so uh, how do you find these concrete devices? I think it's great how you remember that we met five years ago at the uh, well, Target. I have memory for, for you know <laughs> great uh, specialist in this industry. So yeah, it it was a great pleasure then, and I didn't think that we would talk again. But um, it it appears that the topic of uh, concrete walls um, is still and was an important topic. Uh, we as Pasonko are in a uh, family business, one of the oldest in Germany, manufacturing, uh, assembling and selling steel barrier systems. Um, me personally, I'm the sixth generation of the family business running the international business. Wow. Um, and, and our knowledge uh, globally is uh, pretty big. Um, unfortunately, also about concrete barriers, road safety barriers that popped up over the last five to 10 years more and more um, in different countries, including Germany, uh, where where they have been assembled on the roads. And we are looking from the side of road safety to these devices. I remember when we talked five years ago at the Autostrada Expo, where we go every time. Um, this year it got uh, obviously cancelled um, because of the uh, pandemic uh, situation. Um, but I hope next year we can go again. Um, to Kielce to participate and I remember we were talking a little bit about what happens with the concrete um, why are there cracks in the concrete and how may you be able to repair them or fix it um, and I think that this was very interesting when we discussed it um, nowadays we of course were blocked by concrete walls for our market where we found that 
um, road authorities have put concrete barriers more and more on the road. And we, we had um, to start thinking about what is the advantage or maybe disadvantage of a concrete barrier for road safety. Uh, I invited you because, well, my business is concrete, that's for sure. And the concrete repair uh, and injection. Uh, so I had to ask this question. Uh, how often do you see that these passive safety devices are destroyed? And uh, what do you think about this uh, concrete uh, being used for this uh, purpose? Meaning that the safety devices are made of uh, concrete? Well, uh, in Europe or maybe in the world, you can see mainly two different types of, of barriers. Uh, one that is called in situ barrier, uh, which is a concrete road safety barrier um, that is manufactured on site. That means um, a truck with cement puts the cement into a form, um, and out of this form comes uh, a concrete wall that is uh, manufactured on the road side. And the second one, which is a prefabricated uh, concrete barrier that is produced or manufactured somewhere and then brought by blocks to the road and put together. Um, when we started looking into the topic of uh, road safety barriers out of concrete, we found especially in this in situ barriers that were manufactured on site, a lot of cracks and uh, holes um, that you can see just by driving, just by passing by the wall. And uh, you can see them actually quite a lot, maybe not when the wall is very new, just uh, put on site. But after a while, after a couple of months, you can really see that um, it looked damaged. It looked yeah. dirty. It looked as if something is happening with this wall um, that may come from the outside or from the inside. Um, and if you look at the, if you ask me about the amount or the quantity of how often do we see this, um, unfortunately, we see that a lot. Um, I agree. And this is this is the reason why I really invited you because I drive a lot around Poland, uh, and every time I drive, I see a situation that this concrete wall are destroyed. So my question was: Is there if there is a business for me to make it repair? And but frankly speaking, I don't see very much that these uh, walls are being repaired. That's the one, one, one place. And the other point is that I don't see it being injected for sure. So this is rather uh, surface, surface uh, protection and little bit from, from here and there. You can find some surface repair, but it's very rare, I must admit. Um, yeah. So speaking about this damages, uh, does it affect any safety on the road if this concrete wall is uh, destroyed? Um, that's a good question. From the uh, view of safety, you would always look into a safety barrier as something um, that takes energy into the system and redirects the car, obviously, because that's what crash on the road um, or sure. a truck or any other vehicle to take this energy and uh, uh, softly redirect the car um, to the road. Mm -hmm. um, now, why is that so important? Obviously not because of the car, but because of the vehicle passengers that sit inside the car that will not um, take an impact that easy. Um, and uh, seeing impacting a car into a wall is a little bit like throwing an egg against <laughs> against the the wall yeah it's um uh, it, if it's very rigid the system the vehicle passenger may may uh have heavier impact uh than on something that is more softer in this case we have in germany an association or an initiative um, that is called uh, nachgeben.com uh, which i would like to mention because uh they have a lot of information about comparison between different systems, mostly steel and concrete, showing what happens if you crash into a concrete wall and what happens mm -hmm. if you crash into a steel barrier. Um, for us, in the last 10 years that we have looked more and more into the situation with concrete walls, um, we believe that there is a measurement for vehicle passenger safety that uh, is even in the harmonized norm E, uh, EN 1317, 
um, the so-called acceleration severity index, mm -hmm. the RC level, that um, is very rarely giving a very good uh, result on concrete walls um, and just middle uh, levels of safety, whereas steel barrier systems give a very um, uh, uh, high safety level uh, on this measurement. So I think that should be taken into account and we have to ask ourselves why uh, do road authorities not use softer system for the safety of vehicle passengers but put everywhere concrete walls which we do not understand why they would do that if it is about the safety for okay. vehicle passengers. Yeah, I see. Uh, just reminded a story, I heard this maybe 20 years ago in Polish radio there was an engineer of uh, safety uh, on the road uh, invited uh, to, the, to the radio and the conversation was more or less about the safety in, on the roads in Warsaw, uh, Poland. And he gave a, a, an example of a road that is being connected from the two lines, uh, are connected into the, in the one. And this connection is, is held in this way that only the car driving the, the one of these two lines can see what is going now on the road. Uh, and this car is, is like allowed to drive faster than the other. Okay. So they put this concrete wall uh, to separate these lines for 100 meters to uh, you know, to prevent the uh, accident that there are two cars going to this one line in the end at the same time. Yes. Uh, and the, the, this guy said that it has to be concrete because it puts into the, you know, mind of this driver who drives faster and who sees the road uh, better that if something wrong, this is be the first. He's fault that the accident uh, took place and if something is wrong he goes uh, to this uh, directly to this concrete wall not the other one so this concrete wall was about to you know to keep safe these this driver and the car of his uh, who was not able to see the the whole uh, road and uh, definitely who would be able to do anything to avoid the accident. So his idea was basically that this concrete wall prevents a car accident. And you say that uh, there are some better uh, ways to prevent car accidents. Yeah, in I, I, I think from, 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 from your example that you mentioned, um, the need that whoever has put the wall there, the need for, for them was to put it as an anti-glare protection, basically, that one car cannot see the other side, not get um, um, uh, attention changed or something, be, uh, be attended to where they are driving and don't look on the other side. This has nothing to do um, as the product being a road safety device, but more that the wall should separate two lines. In that case, there's different products that can provide this anti-glare systems and plastic that you can install on top or, or, or other devices. Um, but from a road safety side view, uh, this has nothing to do with it, putting a concrete wall there and then saying, now we separate this. It's yeah. the same argument than when they say, well, you know, only concrete wall can protect um, the, the road users from trucks breaking through the system that is standing there in the, in the medium, for example. And that's just not true because we have very good steel systems that are softer, giving um, more safety to lighter vehicles and also keep away um, or block trucks and heavier vehicles to crash through the barrier in the medium. So it's, it's more adventurous for vulnerable road users in, in our opinion. So speaking about this uh, destroyed concrete, uh, walls. Uh, we, we just agreed that we see it often. Uh, I drive around Poland, you drive in Germany, uh, I assume that also in many different European and other continents and uh, country. Uh, so you see this concrete wall uh, destroyed. 
do you see it also being repaired? Um, that's that's a good question because um, the 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 advantage of a concrete barrier it's already said by uh, by concrete uh, road barrier lobbyists is that it is very uh, expensive only in um, installing it initially but maintaining it is very cheap so it, it doesn't really matter you can crash into the barrier you don't have to do anything obviously pictures that we have taken from road accidents and that you can see on our website and also i have sent you some of them um, walls do not always just stay the same after a crash uh, that's for sure there's something happening energy um, and the wall is breaking apart um, as well as the cars destroyed um, so there must be some kind of how do we repair it now? And the cost for that is cannot be a cheap solution because what if a block of concrete falls out of the wall? How do you replace this? Do you just put some cement on top of it and then say it's fixed or does the wall break again at the same point after the initial crash, then you fix it and it breaks at the same parts again that you just tried to kind of repair by gluing it or I don't know how you, how you want to do that. Um, very little has been done, I think, in this um, in this way. We have seen that uh, the German road authorities bus tried to fix um, um, one uh, in situ barrier by putting a steel uh, deck on top of the concrete wall to avoid, as far as we understand, um, rain or water coming inside the concrete wall, and then by by in, by connection with the steel reinforcement bars that are inside the concrete wall, because it's just not only concrete, it's, it's a steel reinforcement bar, um, that at, at that moment when the water touched the steel and it, the corrosion starts or whatever chemical process it is inside, that this needs space and it goes to the outside and breaks the concrete wall uh, from the inside. Uh, so yeah, to the, avoid the this... This is, this is exactly uh, what we were discussing five years ago, uh, and I even answered some of your questions, uh, and this uh, article is still online on your webpage. I checked before this yeah. conversation if it exists. Yeah. It does. It's there. Uh, I explained there uh, that the corrosion pro uh, products, uh, the corrosion of concrete and the corrosion of the steel walls are bigger in volume than the steel itself. So there is the, the, this pressure of corrosion uh, against the concrete, and there is no concrete that can uh, stay alive uh, against this, this pressure. That is why we can see so many concrete in general everywhere being destroyed, uh, and you can see the corroded rebars. Uh, this is exactly what happens on the road as well. Yes, so this explains why there's the cracks inside the walls, why it looks like it's kind of destroyed, and it's not only looking like it's kind of destroyed, it's actually it, destroyed it, from it the inside. It's, <laughs> it's uh, kind of exploding from the inside. So how, how can you avoid such a chemical reaction? Um, well, there are surface protection for concrete, that's for sure, but uh, uh, this surface protection won't work if the concrete wall is hit uh, by the car or the or the truck, so it is uh, it is cracked, it is destroyed, and the surface protection won't do anything against this. Uh, so there are two possibilities, or actually one. You have to remove this destroyed part and put another new one uh, in the same place. Yeah. Am I right? So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's basically basically it's the same that we do with steel barriers. You need to go on site. You need to stop the traffic for that work, or you need to redirect the traffic, have a construction site and construction site safety. Um, mm -hmm. Cut out this this um, damaged, let's say, wall and, and replace it. Um, or if you have prefabricated walls, you take out the ones that are hit and take new ones inside and connect it. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of experience on our highways, the autobahn, especially on the A3, A4, A43 and A45 where due to exactly that, that the concrete wall is dismantling itself by chemical reaction from inside and with cracks, the government has just um, um, given a speed limit. So instead of driving on our well-known autobahn as, as fast as you want, 
uh, now you have to drive very slow because the safety barriers are not um, uh, performing as they should uh, in case of safety. So that's also a way that the government finds now to tell us don't drive so fast. Um, safety is not uh, provided here correctly. So you need to drive less fast so that hopefully not too much is happening here. But that shows that the concrete wall is not um, working as it should as a safety barrier. You mentioned two types of uh, concrete uh, safety uh, barriers. The one that are uh, produced uh, uh, in situ and prefabricated. Which one of them performs better in terms of safety, of our safety, of our you know, driver's safety, the passengers? Well, from a steel manufacturer view, I would say that none of them is really giving, <laughs> you, giving you what you want. You always need to ask yourself, what, what do you want from a safety barrier? Well, is, is it, like you said, is it the anti-glare? Is it that you don't want them to look on the other side? Is it to give, um, is it uh, to be easy to maintain? Um, you don't want to have so many construction sites. Um, is it that you don't want, uh, that you don't want a truck or a car to drive through the road safety barrier because something is standing behind? Uh, um, um, is it the school behind something that you want to protect? Is it the building behind? Is it the um, um, sign pillar behind it? Um, or do you want to give road safety uh, to to the the road users, to the car uh, vehicle passengers? And if that is the case that you want to do that traffic safety, then in my opinion you cannot put a wall there. It's it's not giving you what you are intending to do, you want to protect the road users, and if you put a wall there, then you're basically doing more harm than putting a steel barrier there. But still, we can see, uh, as you mentioned uh, a couple of minutes ago, that there are more and more uh, concrete walls uh, on our roads. You say that it's last five to ten years, uh, if I understood you correctly. Do you uh, do you think what's the reason for that? I think that the lobby is very well uh, positioned, that a lot of construction companies have a lot of concrete to put somewhere and that they mm. use it to put now as a road safety barrier. Um, I think it's a lack of uh, knowledge, a lack of um, information, um, a lack of experience. These concrete walls are not there like since forever, they just appeared and they're showing already that something is wrong because they get disassembled, even in situ barriers, they get disassembled uh, kilometer wise, they get disassembled um, to, to be replaced. Um, mm -hmm. It appears that most of the road authorities or customers prefer uh, prefabricated concrete walls because this in situ is taken away, prefabricated walls are taken there, so you go from one day yeah, to the, the other. Faster to, to yes. install them. Yes, but we have taken pictures from an example of the A45 where in situ concrete barrier has been replaced and it took months, if not nearly a year, to replace the in situ concrete barrier on kilometers of, um, of road. And I think if you look at the pictures, it's, uh, it's obviously to see that if things like this get replaced, you need to disassemble it. Um, you need okay, to put so somewhere the, the, the concrete wall that is destroyed um, and it's not recyclable. So all the stuff is basically standing on the medium until the truck comes, put it away, uh, like if uh, like if you would disassemble a house, basically. And all the stuff that is in there is not really recyclable and it's dirt and it's, um, and it's um, dangerous for the time being there as a construction site. Um, well, yeah, it, it is somehow possible to, to use it once again, but it's not easy, it takes time. I wanted to ask you about uh, if you know how to maintain and repair the concrete, uh, if you've seen it, uh, but you said, you actually you almost answered my questions because you said that you don't see the, the, you, this concrete wall being repaired and you rather see them being replaced. So is this the uh, best uh, way to repair the concrete, to replace it? Well, um, I don't think it's very cost effective. Economically wise, it's probably very expensive. 
what we see sometimes too is when they glue over the cracks. So you have mm -hmm. a kind of, it, it looks like a kind of uh, paste or something where they glue over the cracks that are in the walls. But I don't think that uh, more than that has been done. Uh, what we see a lot is that road authorities, responsible road authorities are marking the cracks and giving them different numbers. So there must be a documentation about how many cracks are out there on the concrete wall. Um, but obviously we don't have this information. That's something for, for, for the road authority to answer. Um, from what we see, they document a lot. And I don't think that there is a perfect way or good way to maintain concrete uh, damage. Okay, so you say that there are many, many kilometers of this uh, uh, oh, concrete yeah. walls being uh, being documented, documented and examined uh, and even marked. Uh, have you seen anything being uh, injected? I mean, the crack injection, concrete crack injection, has been held to fill these cracks with a kind of material. No, right. not not for road, not for road barriers. I see. Uh, they have the they have the same problem in Germany. We have the same problem now with all the concrete uh, bridges that we have. Mm -hmm. Also, there you need the kind of repair. How do you go there, etc. Uh, on bridges, is not that heavy to stop the traffic. But for walls on the roadside, you need construction site and uh, put safety and that or these measurements that cost a lot. Yeah. Uh, so. How do you think that this kind of uh, concrete repair could be had? Like, what, it, what does it take to, to repair it on, on, on site, on the road? Mm. Like, how many people uh, at time, uh, you know, technology, uh, right temperature on, on, uh, on the site, so it can be too cold to repair concrete and it can't be too cold to uh, inject the, con the concrete for sure, uh, like taking under consideration this, you know, traffic jam for kilometers. Yes, cars yes. waiting in the line to pass this uh, place where the concrete is being uh, repaired or injected, even if we take it as it's, it's possible. Yeah. Uh, I have I no idea about this, and I uh, listed like five, uh, you know. Um, point that the, this is disadvantages of concrete on, on, on the road? Yes, I think uh, that's a good question. I think that there need to be more experience in how to fix that problem. Um, for steel barriers, you know that we drive out within 48 hours, we can repair the, the damaged uh, parts of the steel barrier for concrete. That Why 48 hours? Is it the rule? Uh, for, for safety reasons, yes, exactly. Especially in medians yeah. to be to be able to give the same performance of the road safety barrier that it was before. Um, especially in medians when when there's happening something you or roadside safety it doesn't really matter on the roadside you want that the level of performance is always the same and that should be done quite quickly. Just if you can, the, yeah, okay, but you just said that the, the, in the concrete. Uh, mm, uh, you know, situation, they just put the sign, speed limit. Exactly. So, that, that's what we said. That's, that, 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 that's, that's what and I they meant. Don't, with... They don't do it in 48 hours, for sure. I mean, no. it's hard but, to believe. But at the same time, they argue that uh, a wall can be crashed more than once. Uh -huh. That's the advantage of a concrete wall, according to lobbyists, saying that if somebody crashes into a concrete wall. The concrete wall is not really damaged. What is damaged for sure is the car and maybe the vehicle passenger, but the concrete wall is top. So that means less cost for people to go out there to repair the concrete wall, less cost of putting signs and stuff like this for, for construction site safety. Um, but what happened with the car and what happened with the road user, that is not the problem or responsibility of the authorities. We just mentioned that there is 48 hours to to repair the steel barriers, uh, and the, this is the uh, like the law says so. Uh, taking your uh, experience, uh, how long does it take to uh, uh, you know repair the concrete uh, from the time when the when the you know this accident uh, was reported? 
to the time when when this concrete wall is uh, repaired or re replaced if it's so uh, you know heavy destroyed well first of all this depends on each tender by itself if if each job is uh, specified so it doesn't always have to be 48 hours it it um, it could be and if it is then you sign to get the job to do that for installation, assembling, and maintaining. For concrete walls, it would be interesting to know because um, I don't think they do anything. Yeah, if there is if there is cracks so or if there has been a crash and um, parts of the concrete wall are falling out of the concrete wall, they put a kind of sign in front of it and leave the concrete wall as it is, and that can take uh, a while. We have seen this. Um, um, on the A3 autobahn, on A5, where nothing is happening, pictures are available, I think uh, you, you have them. Um, dirt is taken away after the crash, everything that was dirty is pushed away and the wall is just there and, and broken. It, you need to ask yourself, after a crash, um, there's maybe bigger parts of the concrete wall that fall out, as well as the reinforcement bar, the steel bar inside the concrete wall is deformed. So what can you do? You would need to go on the site and really cut out, um, I don't know, a couple of meters of this concrete wall and then come again with a truck with cement and re-put the whole in situ there. How, mm -hmm. how do you repair this? I, I'm, it's a good question. How do, how do they want to do this? So as maybe they see that we cannot do this, they put prefabricated concrete walls there that in that case also you would have to drive out, the take away... Solution. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I if I would have to answer this, uh, how to do it using concrete, I would use prefabricated ones. Absolutely. For maintaining, maybe yes, but you still have to look from the roadside safety view um, and the safety of vehicle passengers, where you would say, well, neither of this system really give us an advantage. Um, but maybe there is. Maybe in future, maybe you come up with a solution to fix uh, <laughs> to fix these problems with the concrete wall. Well, I invited you for this uh, for this podcast to discuss the this you know the amount of concrete needed to be repaired, the ways you've seen it repaired, uh, you know this like maybe your ideas that uh, this uh, reparation can be held in a uh, better way. I mean, I was I was thinking that I was thinking that this is the uh, actual topic of the of the conversation but now we just you know change it into the situation where we both agree that, that perhaps the concrete is not the best uh, material to be used uh, for our safety on the roads i really yes, find I myself that, convinced uh, i i think for for this for this definitely but then there is this point where you where you would come up and say um look, we want to protect an area here. And that's very important to protect the area because if something happened to this area, um, uh, things could be worse. Yeah, let's say there is a building, there's people inside there. If a truck drive into that building, that's really um, a, a damage that doesn't matter about the safety of the vehicle passenger, but much more people um, could be harmed here. So therefore you put a concrete wall to protect this area. Um, but in that case, you have to say that you want to protect this building, this sign, this pillar, this whatever you, there is that you want to protect. But don't call it a road safety barrier, which um, attention is to save roads, uh, road users. Um, so yeah, that, there, there I agree with you too <laughs> about this. I wonder uh, what our listeners uh, uh, would say and what is their uh, opinion on, on this. Because even though this is the Concrete Injection Made Easy podcast and we are talking here about the concrete uh, injection and the concrete repair topics, uh, this is you know a great occasion for, for all of us to take under consideration if we drive and if we are a company owner, we drive a lot. If we are the sites rep, we drive even more. If we are, uh, you know, uh, someone who just drives to, to, to work uh, every day. So we drive a lot worldwide. And if we take the uh, highways, we pass concrete all the time, everywhere. Bridges and this, uh, 
as we as we just said, passive road safety devices. We just pass them all the time. So this topic really affects all of us, and it affects all all our uh, our safety. So I really I'm really curious about um, people's opinion uh, on this uh, on this topic. If you were you know to ask a question to our listeners. Uh, to 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 find out uh, their opinion. What would be your question? I already must ask mine. What is what is your question? I, I would like to know how do you feel when you drive on the road and you think about that something could happen. Obviously, when we drive on the road, we are not thinking about hey, we will crash. Uh, that's that's uh, always a disadvantage for anybody who has uh, to argue about road safety barriers is please use my product. But who wants to use a road safety barrier? Nobody wants that. But in case that something happens, so if you obviously and clearly think about if something would happen now, how do you feel driving next to a concrete wall or a steel barrier? None of them. You can't really say, well, this is positive. I had an accident and hey, I crashed into this and that. You You can never say... Uh, that any of this is something good. An accident is probably always something very bad. But if you try to think about it um, and drive between these concrete walls, how do you feel safer? Is it the steel one or is it the concrete one? And both have an advantage and a disadvantage, but um, especially if we look in the topic of this podcast today, um, injection for concrete. Is a concrete barrier really something that we should use because uh, we can maybe maintain it? We can't right now, but maybe in the future. And that would be great if somebody comes up with a, with, with a solution for that. But we don't have it now. So I'm looking for a solution. I hope to get an email from someone listening to us and they said, hey, you just uh, said in the podcast that there is no solution at the time. Uh, we do have a solution. So I'm looking forward to, to get the email. I will pass this email to you. Yes, so make you will both uh, finally get to know this. Uh, great, 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 great. So there was totally different idea about how this conversation would look like. And suddenly we, uh, we are uh, just about to finish in, uh, uh, asking these two important questions about your question, how do you feel uh, driving right next to the concrete wall? Um, there is one more question, actually. How do you feel when you pass a, a place, the accident place on the highway, and you see this car being, uh, you know, destroyed? You see only the car, obviously. Maybe yeah. you know, people were taken to the hospital. Do we... See do we really take it? Uh, do, do we really think that it could have been us you now crushing um, against this concrete wall? Yeah. So I I wanted uh, it to be steel rather than concrete in this in this case. Once again, even though my business is concrete repair. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for the conversation. Uh, thanks Thank for finding the time. Uh, this con this conversation uh, just uh, uh, this is like 38 minutes, uh, so this is a huge amount of um, information and question asked to force us to think about our safety on the road. Uh, and once again, we are all drivers, so this is uh, our lives and our future on the road. Thanks again. Uh, Thank you. And, uh, um, Last thank sentence. you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Um, sorry if it took a little bit longer uh, than we thought. I um, hope this podcast is, is good uh, for all listeners and maybe raise some questions. Uh, we are there for, for a couple of answers. I think discussion could go far longer. Um, but uh, we, I appreciate that you took into account to contact and to be able to talk on this podcast and I'm okay. open for, for any, any more questions or, or um, anything else about the topic. Looking forward to some, some, some answers, maybe good recommendations too. Uh, just to let you know, uh, uh, I will put um, any uh, details uh, that you will be able to you know, get in touch with Martin Hickman. 
and as well uh, I will put uh, his web page uh, the, the link uh, leading to his web page and uh, some pictures we uh, mentioned during our conversation that there will be also uh, available to have a look at the notes of this show so feel free uh, this is inblog.com.pl slash podcast and uh, this is where you can find this um, notes and the whole conversation thanks for listening thanks for this conversation and thank you very have much a good day bye bye thank you what do you think about concrete road barriers do you see them destroyed do you repair it Can you provide some pictures? Okay, I hope you find this episode useful. We are waiting for your comments. Thanks for listening. Remember to subscribe. And I hope you tune in next time.